In this tutorial, I'll show you how to make the monument value perspective illusion in Unity. We'll do this by recreating the structure found in the first level of the game, because it demonstrates the illusion in its simplest form. After creating a new scene, we first want to drop some cubes into the hierarchy, so we can get a sense of what the camera is showing us. As I copy and paste the cubes, I hold control while dragging them, so that they move in one unit increments, and snap together in a perfect grid. I'm disabling shadows from the directional light, because having shadows would actually throw off the whole illusion. This isn't too important for our tutorial, but I'm doing it anyways to be consistent with the game. Now we need to change a few properties on the Unity camera. First, the projection needs to be changed from perspective to orthographic. Secondly, we need to change the Y rotation to 45 degrees. And finally, the X rotation needs to be 35.264. It might sound strange that we have such a specific value for our X rotation, but this is required so that our cubes will snap together in our isometric view, regardless of their depth in the actual 3D space. With our camera set up properly, we just gotta shift around some stuff on the screen to build out that structure that we were trying to make. Note that we can also change the position of the camera, and this is fine because it won't change how the cubes look in terms of how they're projected onto the screen. Our structure looks about right, so now we're ready to implement rotation. Notice the axis at which this L-shaped block rotates. In Unity, you have to do sort of a convoluted thing to rotate around pivot points. There's different ways to do it, but what I like to do is to make the game object that I want to rotate a child of another game object. That parent game object will have a transform position of exactly the pivot point that I want to rotate around. Here I make a parent game object called rotate, and I make sure that its x and y position are the same as one of these top cubes here. The z position actually doesn't matter, because we're going to be rotating around the z axis. Observe how this L shape rotates. It turns out that my structure doesn't quite line up yet because I'm missing a couple cubes, so I'll add them in quickly. Now notice we have this overlap. What we want is to have some of the bottom cubes show up in front of that dark side of the cube right here, which is currently throwing off the illusion. Let's try to fix this by moving some of those cubes at the bottom out to the front so they cover this dark square. To shift around the cubes around our isometric perspective, all we need to remember is that moving one up in the y direction is the same as moving 1 in the x and 1 in the z. I shifted some of those bottom cubes out to the front, but now we have the same problem again, except this time it's in the bottom row of cubes. You might think that we need a very complicated workaround to handle the edge case of those overlapping cubes. In fact, we can do something extremely simple. We're going to cut the cube in half so that from the isometric perspective, you don't see this discolored face. There are different ways you can do this, but I'm going to open up Blender and make a quick model. Here's the default cube that shows up when you open up Blender. We're basically going to use it as is, except we're going to cut out two of the bottom vertices and then fill in the missing faces. As you'll see later, 
once we put this shape into the isometric perspective, you'll no longer be able to see the discolored face. Here I'm setting the dimensions of our newly made half cube so that it matches the one dimension cube of unity. Drag the Blender model to import it into Unity. Then drag the automatically created prefab into your scene. I'm looking at the position of the cube which I want to replace with my half cube. And then I'm taking that position and setting it onto my new half cube. I'm also rotating the half cube to put it into the right orientation. Now notice when I hide the old cube. First I have to change the color of the new half cube so that it matches the rest of the cubes. From this perspective, I can no longer see that discolored face. So now to connect my platform, all I need is another cube in the further back structure to fill out that little gap. So I'm going to copy and paste another cube. Now I'm going to rotate the pivot object that I made earlier back to its original orientation of 0 degrees. As you can see, we've now successfully produced the core illusion in Monument Valley without even writing a single line of code. But to make it even clearer, we're going to write a little script that rotates that block for us. This script is simply going to rotate the block, either counterclockwise or clockwise, and change direction whenever you press any key. This is a very straightforward Unity script, so I won't describe it in too much detail, but make sure to check out the source code in the GitHub link in the description below. One thing I will point out is that it's easy to get tripped up over which direction is clockwise and which direction is counterclockwise, because it depends on the position of the camera. So you can see it already basically works, but to make it even better, I'm going to stop it at 0 and 270 degrees so that it snaps right into place. When we're rotating clockwise, we want our bar to go from 0 degrees to 359 to 358, etc., all the way down to 270. So there's two checks we need to make. First we have to check that the Euler angles Z is greater than 270 degrees. The other check we need to make is that the Euler angle Z is less than or equal to zero. And we need this because the angle starts off at zero. So if we didn't have it, it would never rotate to begin with because zero is less than 270. Finally, if we're rotating counterclockwise, we just have to check if the Euler angles is greater than zero degrees. This was because it should start off at 270, go to 271, etc., etc., up to 360, which is the same as zero. So once it goes over or equal to zero, we stop. Here's our work in action, and that's it for this tutorial. I hope you've learned something, and I'll see you in the next video.